Welcome to this tutorial on QuickJoint. Let's start QuickJoint. OK, let's design a beam splice connection. Start a new connection. Beam or column splice. Next. OK, this example is from the Steel Construction Institute's guide P398. Um, I'm going to take the values from there. Now, the left hand section is a 4571916067UB. And they've used 275 still. Well, the right hand section is the same. Next. OK, the axial load, it's compression, which is negative, minus 150. You can see an explanation here. The moment is 200 kilonewton meters. The shear is 150. OK, we're going to use a category B, which is slip resistant at serviceability limit state and there's a clause reference to euro code here so you can find out exactly what that means if uh, if you've not come across it before so the serv the serviceability limit state forces are compression minus 100 moment 133 and shear 100. OK, next. OK, this is the last form in the wizard, or the last form that requires input. It's suggesting an M28.8 preloaded bolt um, at uh, 130 cross centres. The preferred bolt centres are 70 with an end distance of 35. That seems very reasonable. Um, slip factor a default is 0 0.4, but the SCI view is 0 0.50. Now, EN 1090 2, table 18, you'll see a table of slip factors for various um, treatments and what have you. So, we don't want a web plate on both sides. I don't like those. Um, we will, however, include the minimum resistance checks. Again, if you want to know more about those, there's a reference to the SCI guide here. Next, this is our standard final form in the wizard, which just reminds us that we must always view the calculations. Finish. OK, here's our connection. If we view the calculations, we can see that indeed the wizard's done its job and the connection passes. So we can see here the checks for the flange plate, the web plate, and here are the minimum resistance checks, major axis and minor axis. And also, of course, it's calculated a tension capacity for the, uh, for the connection. So if we scroll down, we can see all the checks in their detail. Very comprehensive. Everything's there, so you can see exactly what quick joint is done. Close. Well, I don't think this really needs a lot of refinement, but we will try something. I'm going to change this center to 70, just to make all the centers the same down the plate. And I'm going to change this one to 140. And that just gives us a little bit more clearance on the bolt and offset. So let's have a look at the calculations. Web plate bending and compression has failed. OK, let's have a look at the web plate. It's only 10 thick, so let's increase it to 12. In fact, that matches the flange plate, so that's quite nice. OK, we're all passed. And I think I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to save it. Splice one. And it's saved. 
OK, we've got a 3D view of the splice. So we can look at the bolt clashes and what have you, which there aren't any, of course. And we can view the results. And this is the formal results for the connection, which we can page down. Or if we want to print it from here, we just click print button. It's all very simple, very straightforward. Go back to the drawing, save it again. So that was our splice connection. Um, and I think that concludes this tutorial.